Coming up in today's video, I get some foxes coming into the call in windy conditions. We have some fantastic wildlife on display here in the UK. Plus, you have a chance to win an original fox caller from Best Fox Call. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for tuning in in what is, let's face it, um, very testing times. I think I'm on day 19 uh, of lockdown so far and look, nobody is itching to get out more than me, but we all need to play our part, stay in um, where we can and make sure that we are keeping everybody safe. All of the footage you're going to see in today's video was filmed well in advance of lockdown taking place. You can of course keep yourself entertained by watching my videos, but also I've got a couple of other suggestions you might want to consider after watching this one of course. The first of which is this video, a very entertaining video from South Somerset Ferreters Field Sports Channel. It's got everything you would want in a field sport production really. It's got education, it's got some good humour, it's got plenty of camera angles, and of course, it's got some good shooting. I'll put a link to this video in this video's description. Also, if like me, you like to spend your time inside the squirrel hide, but clearly can't at the moment, you might wanna check out Ultra Pest Control. They've got some great HD squirrel footage captured on the PARD 008. Again, I'll put a link in the video's description. If you have any suggestions or content you would like me to share, or if later in the year you would like me to come along and film your hunt or shooting expeditions, then please get in touch. Details are below. For now, let's crack on with the foxing action. Don't forget to pay attention because you could win one of these. We start with myself heading over onto the pheasant shoot to look for a couple of problem foxes as I bump in to a handsome row. That's right, I started this session having spotted a fox some way off in the field, uh, but on the way round, as I wanted to get on the right side of the wind for this fox, as it was a, a fairly blustery evening, around 20 miles an hour, I spotted this young roebuck and just wanted to observe him for a minute or two. Several minutes later, I get in position, as you can see the heat source there, next to a field of sheep. Uh, that have been put in there to graze off the remaining grass. Um, that heat source actually spooked a load of the sheep, so I was quite confident that that was my fox. Although I could see it in the thermal, it took me a minute or two to pick it up through the MV, even using the laser IR. It's several hundred yards away now, this fox, but as you just saw a quick glimpse of, as it turns, you get a good eye shine, confirming that that is indeed our quarry. Coming up very soon, I've got a video showing some great HD rat footage and also talking about the exact type of kit you need to get started. Make sure you subscribe so as not to miss it. Back to our fox. I've managed to painstakingly stalk in now, as you can see, uh, it's 20 odd minutes later now of me taking it foot by foot and inch by inch to get into range now uh, of this fox and we're very nearly there. This field is extremely wet, very slippery, uh, so I need to be extra cautious. With a river to my left and the wind blowing um, straight into my face, I don't have to worry about this fox either hearing some of the slight squelching going on or indeed smelling me. Um, I observe him for a couple of minutes, make sure it's well within range and I've got a secure footing before I get ready to take the shot. I also notice though, as you'll see in just a second, that this fox is carrying an injury, look, he's holding that rear leg up. because it came out so quick. I just got the first little bit on the thermal. I thought I'd hit the record button. 
but it didn't record. But I've just come over to the pheasant shoot and seen a fox wandering around in the field right behind the farmer's house in this incredibly wet old broccoli field. I don't want to put my torch on full beam because while I'm watching this one, there's another one over in this direction somewhere. And I think he's still there. I'll just have a quick look with my thermal now. So, what have we got here? Oh, it's a dog. It's a dark one. But anyway, let's see if we can get the third one of the evening. Let's crack on. Whilst I'm stood by this fox, that's the roe deer still in picture you can see over there. As I confirm the heat source just to the left of the big shed there is our fox. I couldn't get an accurate distance reading because to be fair at that distance I was struggling to hold it still. I navigated the next field over though and sure enough the fox was wandering just a few hundred yards away. However, it was wandering away from me. So I decided what I'd do because the wind is now blowing st uh, strong left to right. Uh, is I put the caller on and see if I could get it away uh, from any dangerous backstops there. And sure enough, putting the caller on did the job as it turns and comes straight towards the caller. As you'll see in just a second, um, it stops for a perfect broadside shot, but with the wind uh, blowing me around a little bit, I actually uh, pulled the shot um, a little bit left and double lunged it. It did run probably 20, 30 yards, but we soon found it. Right, well I can put my headlamp on full this time. Stalk number two was again successful. I've got to navigate this. Oh, it's a fence. And, uh, well, we went down in this field once again though. It is very wet. Oh sh**, that is wet. Oh. Alright. Uh, this running blood trail. Look. number two down and out the way. The third fox of this particular farm, and in fact the fourth fox of the evening, came in the form of this chap I saw from an absolute mile away. I am confident I wouldn't have seen this fox had it not been for the useful tool that is the thermal spotter. Yes, they're expensive, but my god they're a game changer. Once again, using the wind to my advantage, I've got it blowing in my face here, I used the thermal spotter to just simply observe this fox. Um, it wasn't really interested, if I'm honest, in the call too much, and he actually lay down uh, to probably go to sleep on this road. So I tried a couple of lip squeaks to catch the fox's attention once I'd stalked in painstakingly across another wet field, and this is the result. To win the Best Fox Call original mouth call, all I want you to do is simply comment down below in this video how far is the fox that Kevin shoots. Put your comment down below, I'll pick a winner at random in roughly a month's time and I will arrange to get the caller sent straight to you. Good luck! That popping sound can only mean one thing, and I believe the award for most dramatic death scene in this video certainly goes to this fox. Check out that death flop. I 
it's a bit better in the shade of these trees, but that was a painstaking stalk into fox number four of the evening. I think we got that one in the cranium. Yes. Cool, only just though. Right on top of the head, in fact. number four for the evening. Bloody good result. Much like myself, Kevin's also been exercising his Tika 223 at 120 yards. He takes this fox down, uh, spotted with his uh, Pulsar Axion Key thermal monocular. Onto a different evening altogether now and I stopped to observe this family of muntjac uh, just a stone's throw away from where I keep my squirrel feeder. You can also note several pigeons also in the trees here as well. On the way down to the location and up on the bank we can see our fox uh, once again um, coming actually from the direction of the spinny that I had shot a fox in um, only the week previous to this. I need to be over where those tall trees are there so we finally get round there in the car and notice this lovely looking barn owl taking it easy looking for the odd rodent passing by as I probably disturbed this chap's dinner. Sorry about that, but it is beautiful nevertheless. Deciding that it would be best tackled if I went to stalk this fox by myself, I get myself in position over just the other side of the cover to where the fox was last seen. First of all I thought this was it, but uh, it turns out it was another muntjac as this badger pops out just 17 yards away. So I'm clearly in the right place in terms of the wind uh, and everything else for the wildlife to be able to go about its business there as he's looking for worms. That's not what we came for though, we are looking for the red menace and there it is spotted coming from right to left towards my location several hundred yards away there as that's on 16 times mag looking through the scope. He finally wanders to uh, a decent range but the position I'm in as we still got our badger in view at the same time here is that um, the backstop in that direction isn't brilliant. I really need him to come a bit more to the left so I'm just checking the distance here with the thermal. It's in range, but it's also very windy, and like I said, it's not safe. He actually went way, way left, uh, so he went behind the trees, I couldn't see him. So I walked forward, put the fox caller out, the Icotec GC500, played rabbit distress, and actually called this fox all the way back from several hundred yards away. The trouble is, rather than come my side of the trees, the awkward little sod went to the right back behind the trees, so um, I had to wait several minutes before he actually came back into range. thinking to myself at this point I've got a narrow gap in the hedge here somewhere about there where I'm going to shout the fox and stop it um, once it's uh, once it reaches that point 
Luckily for me though, the fox, when it actually got there, stopped and started sort of mooching around as it was anyway, so I didn't need to shout it and alert it to my presence, it was already kind of stopped. I just needed it to come probably a few inches further forward and I'm just about ready to take this guy out. As you may be able to hear in the background there, I always like to keep the caller going uh, for a little while just in case anything else is in the area and sure enough, although again it's quite some distance off, I could just about spot that one even with the laser concentrated a little bit there as you can see when I wound it out I couldn't see it anymore but there is another fox uh, several hundred yards away in another field so I'm just planning my route uh, trying to again use the wind and keep the wind uh, in my face to be able to stalk in I eventually do and this is quite some time later that was a good half an hour almost 40 minutes of painstakingly stalking and walking across dikes and fields to get into position the first shot actually went a little bit low I thought it was dead on its feet Oh, dead on its belly should I say straight away but it wasn't so I quickly reloaded as it, as it started to try and drag itself away and as soon as I could I took a follow-up shot never nice to not get them with the first shot but sometimes that's the way it goes well that took <coughs> ages but I'm pretty sure this is a really elusive fox. <coughs> Me and Rick have seen, I don't know how many times, but as soon, as soon as a light goes on it, it's off. And it's right in the middle of a field here. Looks a bit skinny. Oh, yeah, he's an old timer. Definitely seen that one before. That's the second fox anyway down. Let's uh, take them back over and see if the first one we got was a vixen. Well, <coughs> we're just going to go and get the first fox I've just shot. Just dragged the second one back to the farm track. Now, it was only a week or two ago, I shot a fox up here, so it'll be interesting to see what this is. I shot a vixen here, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see what this is. She's got a wound. Over. It is a vixen. Scabby looking thing. Well, there's the kit. There you go. Dog and a vixen dealt with. Happy days. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you like what you saw, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Take care, stay safe, and as always, and when you can, happy shooting. I'll catch you in the next one.